coming up on MCTV this week. Learn more about DACA through the Constitution Day Observance Discussion. This week starts now. Hello, welcome to MCTV This Week. For Tay Heipel, I'm Denzel Johnson. Last Wednesday, in observation of Constitution Day, the Political Science Department held a presentation and discussion in the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. The program explained immigration views from both Republicans and Democrats, stating that 86% of Democrats and 11% of Republicans are in favor of DACA. 27% of Republicans stated that they would be in favor of DACA if more border security was added. Are these people weren't brought here of their own free will. They were children. That's why it's called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And they've done their best to integrate themselves into American life. They've become productive members of society. It's important that the federal government, be it through legislative action or through executive order, protects these people. Nearly 800,000 people registered for DACA protection since its creation in 2012. Traveling around the world might not be an easy thing to do, but intercultural life gives people a taste of what it feels like. Lily Gein has the story. The annual cultural festival took place on Saturday, September 23rd on Dunlap Terrace. There was a bit of a late start and the heat was high, but more people showed up during lunchtime. Many recipes from different countries like Japan, Ghana, and Costa Rica were served. Yeah, it's fun, especially the food. You can showcase your country's food. You can give them recipes and then they can, chefs here, they can try their best to make sure to replicate what that recipe is going to look like and then you can try what Americans cook your food. Yeah? Apart from the diversity of dishes, there was also a wide variety of acts, including students singing, colorful voices of praise, a steel pan performance from Trinidad and Tobago, and a belly dancer. The event was sponsored by the Intercultural Life Office. Taking a look at some events on campus this week. Today at 8 p.m., ASAP will be hosting a casino night in the lower level of Stockdale. There will be a WPFS DJ face-off in front of Stockdale tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. The students' production of Pieces of Glass Bell will be running from Thursday to Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and on Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Fusion Theater. Tickets are $7 for students and seniors, $6 for MCID, and $8 for general admission. Coming up after the break, Fighting Scots football takes on Lawrence University. Last Saturday, the Fighting Scots football team opened conference play against the Vikings of Lawrence University. The Scots ground game dominated, rushing for 271 yards on the day. Two of the four touchdowns came on breakaway rushes by backs DeAndre Wright and Josh McKenzie. The defense did its job as well, holding Lawrence to only 49 yards of total offense. An example of that can be seen here as Lamar Watson tips a ball for an incomplete pass. A dominant day on both sides of the ball resulted in a Monmouth win, 34 to nothing. This week, the Scots will travel to Grinnell, Iowa for their next conference match against Grinnell College. On September 23rd, the women's soccer team opened Midwest Conference play against Ripon University. There was plenty of Gatorade to go around as it was a sweltering 92 degrees at game time. 
here in the first half. Red Hawk boy Mia Aoki Kramer blocks J.C. Reese's shot on goal. Rippon would have chances of their own in the first half as here maybe King would pull a shot wide right. The Scots would go to the halftime break with a 1-0 lead thanks to Deanna Salamanca's goal late in the first half. After a quick goal by the Red Hawks in the early minutes of the second half, Hannah Lingle's shot on goal would be caught by Rippon's goalie to maintain the tie. But the Scots' offense would not relent as on this breakaway play, Hannah Kugler would net the goal to give Monmouth the lead late in the second half. That goal would prove enough for the Scots to hold on for a close 2-1 win over Rippon. I mean, this, one, this weekend's an important one. We knew we couldn't come out of this weekend with zero points. Uh, Rippon was fifth in the conference last year. St. Norbert was fourth. Both teams finished higher than us. And so we definitely need to steal some points this weekend from someone. And so it was good to start off with three so that way we can give ourselves a little bit of room to win some games that we maybe not are not supposed to, but also get a chance to compete in some games that maybe we should win. And so I think that starting with three points to start the conference season has been uh, it's a good thing for us right now. The women's team will next take on Illinois College this Saturday, October 7th at 1 p.m. at Peacock Memorial Stadium. That's it for sports. Here's the rest of the scores from the week. That's it for MCTV this week. I'm Tate Heipel. Tune in next time for another great edition of MC TV This Week. And I'm Denzel Johnson. You can also watch us on the web at mommythcollege.edu slash MCTV. See you next time.